Well, hello, fifth graders. Today, we're going to be focusing on something called elapsed time. All right. And uh, so that's going to be our focus today. And there's some conversions that I want you to be aware of. Okay. First of all, I want to talk about how there's 24 hours equals one day. I want to make sure that we understand that there's seven days in one week. I want to make sure that we understand that there's about 52 weeks, give or take, in one year. I also want to make sure we understand that there's 365 days in one year. I want to make sure that we understand that there's 60 seconds in one minute. I guess it's not miniature, it's just minute. And that there's 60 minutes in one hour. So I'm going to freeze right there. I really need you to pause the video fifth graders, pause the video, write this down, and then resume the video. So elapsed time, these are the conversions you need to know. 24 hours equals one day, seven days equals one week, 52 weeks equals one year, 365 days equals one year, 60 seconds equals one minute, 60 minutes equals one hour. Pause the video, write those down. And we're back. Hopefully you have written those down and have those to refer to. Well, your first set of directions, and this is going to sound familiar, is to convert. Here in chapter 10, uh, fifth grade, we've been doing a lot of conversions. Converging metric units, converting inches into feet, and all this other stuff. We've done uh, the metric units. We've done tons and pounds and ounces. Uh, we've done gallons, quarts, pints. We've done all that stuff. And now we're going to be converting these elements of time. All right. So let's take just a look at a couple examples. Let's say we have five days and we want to convert that into hours. All right. Our philosophy fifth grade is going to stay the same. When the measurement gets bigger... The number gets smaller, which means we divide, okay? But if the measurement gets smaller, then the number is going to get bigger, which means we multiply. So when I look at five days equals blank hours, I know that one day is bigger than one hour. So going from days to hours, my measurement is getting smaller, which means my number is getting bigger, which means I'm going to multiply. So I come up to my chart, since I'm dealing with days and hours, and I see, well, 24 hours equals one day. So I know the number 24 is going to be involved in my multiplication problem. And since I have five days, I can logically conclude that I'm going to be doing 24 times 5. Well, 22, 24 times 5 equals 120, where five days equals 120 hours. All right, so let's look at another one. Let's say that I have 1,800 seconds, and I want to convert that into minutes. So that's what I'm doing, taking 1,800 seconds and converting that into minutes. So I'm going from seconds to minutes, and I know that one second is smaller than one minute. So my measurement is getting bigger. And since my measurement is getting bigger, my number is going to get smaller. So I come back over to my conversion chart and I think, well, what's the relationship between seconds and minutes? Well, it says that 60 seconds equals one minute. So I know that the number 60 is going to be involved, but I've got 1,800 seconds. So really what I'm going to be doing is 1,800 being divided by 60. We want to use our zeros tricks here, folks. The basic fact we're doing 
is 18 divided by 6. Well, 18 divided by 6 is 3. And remember, I cancel one zero off here, one zero off here, okay? There's no more left over here, but I've got one left here. So that needs to become part of my answer, where 1,800 seconds equals 30 minutes. All right, let's just look at one more, and then we'll move on from there. Uh, let's say that I have, I don't know, I'm going to say, let's say we have five years, and we want to establish how many days that is. Well, I should know that one year is longer than one day. So I should understand that my measurement is getting smaller. And when my measurement gets smaller, my number gets bigger. Well, what's the relationship between years and days? Well, I come over here, and I see that it tells me that 365 days equals one year. So since I'm doing a multiplication problem, going from a bigger measurement years to a smaller num on measurement days, and it tells me that 365 days equals one year, I can logically conclude that what I'm doing is 365 multiplied by 5. So I just go and do that. 5 times 5 is 25. Put the 5 down, carry the 2. 5 times 6 is 30. Plus 2 is 32. Put the 2 down carry the 3. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18. I get 1,825, where 5 years equals 1,825 days. Now, we're not worried about leap year. I'm sure some of you are like, oh, Mr. Swick, what about leap year and all this other stuff? Not worried about leap year. Technically, in a 5-year span, you are right. Depending on the years, we would have a minimum of one extra day because of leap year. And if the first year was leap year, then the fifth year would also be leap year. Whole different thing. We are just going to go today with 365 days in a year and know that that's going to be pretty close. And depending on leap years, there may be an extra day or two. But that's a detail we're not going to worry about. All right, so I'm going to pause here. All right, and I'm going to erase my board as we kind of change gears a little bit in dealing with elapsed time, okay? All right, now, you're gonna have some different things, all right, and it's going to tell you to find, okay? It's gonna tell you to find the start elapsed or end time. Now, sometimes it's going to set the problem up like this uh, for you, okay? Uh, it's going to set the problem up like this for you. So I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do here? All right, and so let's say I have start time, okay? We're going to say that the start time is 10 o'clock a.m. I know the elapsed time. The elapsed time is going to be 5 hours, 8 minutes. My job is to figure out what the end time is. So I'm thinking, well, it's 10 o'clock. So if I'm going to count five hours past 10 o'clock, I'm going to think, well, after one hour, it's going to be 11 o'clock. After two hours, it's going to be 12 o'clock. But then I want to remember after three hours, it's going to be one o'clock. Now, the other thing you need to remember is that you're going to need to be specifying a.m. and p.m. I want you to specify the difference. Once we get to 12 o'clock noon, it is now p.m. And it doesn't become a.m. again until it's 12 o'clock midnight. So now we're at 1 o'clock p.m. A fourth hour would be 2 o'clock p.m. And the fifth hour would be 3 o'clock p.m. So I started at 10. Five hours later, 1, 2, 3, 4, five. It's three o'clock p.m. 
but it says five hours and eight minutes. So it's not three o'clock. It's really 3.08. And of course, I want to remember to put the p.m. All right, let's look at another one. Let's say that I've got a start time that I don't know. I have an elapsed time of seven and three fourths hours. Oh boy, that ought to be interesting. My end time is four o'clock p.m. All right, so first of all, I know I'm ending at four o'clock. Whatever it is that's ending at four o'clock, it took seven and three fourths hours long. So maybe somebody had to go to work. They worked for seven and three fourths hours. You had to go to school or went on some something that took you seven and three fourths fourths hours. Maybe you went on a trip and you started sometime and you had to drive in the car for seven and three-fourths hours. You arrived at four o'clock. So what time did it all start? Well, I need to work backwards because remember I'm finding the start time. So I'm. it's what happened earlier. So I need to work backwards from four o'clock. Well, one hour before would have been three o'clock. Two hours before would have been two o'clock. Three hours before would have been one o'clock. Four hours before would have been 12 o'clock noon. Five hours before would have been 11 o'clock, but now I'm in the a.m. I'm back to morning now. I crossed over 12 o'clock, so I'm going back. Six hours earlier would have been 10 a.m. Seven hours earlier would have been 9 a.m. But, I, but the answer is not 9 o'clock a.m. because it says that the elapsed time was 7 and 3 fourths hours. I need to figure out what in the world this 3 fourths hours is. Well, remember, let's remember our conversion that told us 60 minutes in an hour. So I need to figure out how many minutes this 3 fourths hour is. So 3 fourths equals how many over 60? Because there's 60 minutes. Well... I know that 4 times 15 equals 60, so I have to do 3 times 15. 3 times 15 is 45, okay? 45. So this 3 fourths hours is 45 minutes. Now, I know that 7 hours before 4 o'clock was 9 o'clock in the morning, but I have to go another 45 minutes back. So what I do is I do a subtraction problem and I set it up as nine o'clock, which is nine hours and zero minutes. And I'm subtracting away 45 minutes. So I'm subtracting away 45 minutes. So it's kind of an interesting math problem here. I can't do zero minus 45. So I'm gonna borrow an hour. Instead of nine hours, I'm now gonna have eight hours. Now, a normal subtraction, I would just say, oh, I borrowed one. I'm going to bring it over. I'm going to put it here and make it a 10. Well, that doesn't work because then I just have 10 minus 45. But what I need to remember is that I borrowed one hour. If I borrowed one hour, I actually borrowed 60 minutes. So I'm going to get rid of this zero, and I'm going to replace it with a 60. I want to make that very clear. I borrowed one hour. And over here, that becomes 60 minutes. So now I do 60 minus 45. Well, I can't do 0 minus 5. So I borrow from the 6, make it a 5, make that 0 a 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. I get 15 minutes. 8 minus nothing is 8. Well, what time is it at 8 hours and 15 minutes? The start time was 8, 15 a.m. And that's my start time. So let's look at another one. Okay. So I can kind of show you what, I, so I can kind of show you what it is that's happening here. All right. So I have start time, 
we're going to say is 4 o'clock p.m. I'm going to figure out the elapsed time. All right, I'm going to figure out the elapsed time. And we don't know. And it's going to say end time 7 23 p.m. Now, one thing we want to notice, these are both p.m., so we don't cross over midnight. Since I don't cross over midnight, I can just do what I did before. I ended at 7 hours and 23 minutes, okay? And I started at 4 hours and 0 minutes. I do that subtraction problem here. 23 minutes minus 0 minutes is 23 minutes. 7 minus 4 is 3 hours. 3 hours, 23 minutes. My elapsed time was 3 hours, 23 minutes. All right, so what if I have a little story problem, though? Okay. All right, Nia's karate class starts at 5.15 p.m. and ends at 7.25 p.m. How long is the karate class. Well, same thing again here, folks. When we're starting at 5.15 and we're ending at 7.25, we don't cross over midnight. So I can take my end time, which is 7.25, 7 hours and 25 minutes. I can go to my start time, which is 5 hours and 15 minutes, and I can do a subtraction problem. 25 minus 15 is 10 minutes. 7 minus 5 is 2 hours. How long is the karate class? It's 2 hours and 10 minutes. All right. However, what if Cooper... watched a movie guess I don't need that W watched a movie that started at 10.35 a.m. and finished At 1.15 a.m. How long was the movie? Well, this question brings up a more interesting situation. Because, uh, actually, we're not going to make that a.m. We want to make that p.m. All right, my mistake. This question brings about an interesting situation because Cooper was watching a movie, okay? And it started in the morning at 10.35. And he actually crossed over 12 o'clock noon while the movie was going on. And it didn't finish until 1.15. So we started over at 12 and 1. So how is that going to work with a subtraction problem like this? Because our 115 is actually smaller numbers than our 1035. Well, maybe some of you have heard of military time. Okay? And so this is what I would have shown you to do in class. So there's other ways to do this, but I want to give you a little exposure to what we call army time or military time. 
in the military, if you have had any uncles or maybe even parents or grandparents that have served in the military, they do they do hours by 24 hours, just like we do 24 hours in a day. But at 12 o'clock noon, they don't restart. At 1 o'clock, that's actually to them 13 o'clock or what they call 13 hours. 2 o'clock is like 14 o'clock or what they call 14 hours. Okay, so this to them, this 1 o'clock 15, they would call this 13 hours and 15 minutes because they, they count it the same just like we do up to noon. But at 12, at 1, they don't start over at 1. They go to 13. So I can think of this as 13 hours and 15 minutes minus the 10 hours and 35 minutes. Then I can just subtract. But I see that I can't do 15 minus 35. So I have to borrow from the 13 and make it a 12. Now remember once again, I borrowed an entire hour. Since I borrowed an hour, I borrowed 60 minutes. So I have to add 60 to the 15. 15 plus 60 is 75. When I do 75 minus 35, I get 40. When I do 12 minus 10, I get two. Two hours and 40 minutes. That's how long the movie was that Cooper was watching. All right, sixth grade, I'll be available to help with this assignment uh, in class. So uh, we'll talk to you later.